Have you ever wondered what set the stage for one of the most devastating wars in American history? The American Civil War, a conflict that ripped the nation apart, was not the result of a singular event, but rather a series of escalating tensions and disagreements. The roots of this conflict lay deep in the American soil, in the economic, political and social landscapes of the nation. At the heart of the discord was the issue of slavery. The southern states with their economy heavily reliant on agriculture, saw slavery as essential. Conversely, the northern states increasingly industrialized and influenced by the abolitionist movement, viewed slavery as a moral wrong that needed to be eradicated. This stark divergence in views created a rift between the North and South, a rift that would only grow wider with time. Then, there was the matter of states' rights. Southern states championed the concept of states' rights, arguing that each state should have the power to decide whether to allow slavery within its borders. They believed that the federal government was overstepping its boundaries by trying to impose its will on them. The North, on the other hand, favored a strong central government and viewed the Southern stance as a threat to national unity. Economic and regional tensions also played a crucial role. The North, with its burgeoning industries, advocated for high tariffs to protect its products from foreign competition. The South, however, felt the brunt of these tariffs, as they increased the cost of imported goods that the region heavily relied upon. These mounting tensions eventually reached a boiling point with the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860. Seen as a threat by the South due to his anti-slavery stance, his election was the final straw that led seven southern states to secede from the Union, setting the stage for the Civil War. Thus, a complex web of political, social and economic factors led the nation into a bloody conflict that would last for four long years. Now that we understand the causes, let's delve into the heart of the war itself. The Civil War was punctuated by numerous battles, each one a brutal testament to the stakes at hand. Among these, three battles stand out, Gettysburg, Antietam, and Vicksburg. Gettysburg, fought in July of 1863, was the war's bloodiest battle. The Union and Confederate armies clashed for three days, resulting in an estimated 51,000 casualties. The Union's victory here marked a turning point in the war, slowing the Confederacy's advance into the North. The Battle of Antietam, on the other hand, was the single deadliest day in American military history. Fought in September of 1862, it saw the Union halt the Confederacy's first invasion of the North. Although the battle was tactically inconclusive, it gave President Lincoln the confidence to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, transforming the war's purpose. Then, there was the Siege of Vicksburg. Lasting from May to July of 1863, this battle was a strategic masterpiece by the Union forces. By gaining control of the Mississippi River, they effectively split the Confederacy in two, a strategy known as the Anaconda Plan. Speaking of strategies, both sides had distinct approaches to the war. The Union, with its superior resources and manpower, aimed to blockade southern ports and seize control of key waterways. The Confederacy, on the other hand, fought a defensive war, hoping to wear down the Union's will to fight. Yet despite their differences, both sides shared a common thread, a reliance on railroads for logistics and communication. This was the first major war where railroads played a crucial role, heralding a new era in military strategy. These pivotal battles, fought with courage and strategy, shaped the course of the Civil War. The victories and losses on both sides not only influenced the immediate outcome of the war, but also left lasting imprints on the nation's psyche, underscoring the immense sacrifices made in the name of unity and freedom. The Civil War wasn't just about battles, it was also about the people who led them. These key figures, through their leadership, strategic decisions, and personal convictions, shaped the course of the war, and, ultimately, the nation itself. Firstly, we have Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. His presidency was marked by the secession of southern states and the start of the Civil War, Lincoln's primary aim was to preserve the Union, 
but his Emancipation Proclamation also turned the tides of war and redefined the conflict as a struggle for freedom and equality. On the other side of the divide, we have Jefferson Davis. As the President of the Confederate States, Davis sought to secure the rights of the Southern states and their way of life. His efforts, however, were met with formidable resistance from the Union. Moving on to the military leaders, we have Ulysses S. Grant, a general of the Union Army. Grant's tenacity and tactical prowess were instrumental in achieving significant victories for the Union, notably the capture of Vicksburg, a strategic Confederate stronghold. His relentless pursuit of victory earned him the nickname Unconditional Surrender Grant. Opposing Grant was Robert E. Lee, the commanding general of the Confederate Army. Despite being offered command of the Union Army at the outset of the war, Lee chose to stand with his home state of Virginia. Lee's military genius, evidenced by his victories at battles like Chancellorsville, made him a formidable adversary. These figures, each with their unique strengths and convictions, played pivotal roles in the Civil War. Their actions and decisions not only determined the outcome of the war, but also shaped the course of the nation in its aftermath. Without a doubt, the Civil War was a crucible of change, and these key figures were the agents of that change. Their leadership, for better or worse, set the stage for the America we know today. These individuals, with their decisions and actions, left an indelible mark on the course of American history. With the end of the war came a new set of challenges. The Civil War had torn the nation apart, and now it was time to put it back together. This period of rebuilding the South and reintegrating the Confederate States back into the Union is known as the Reconstruction Era. Yet Reconstruction was no easy task. The South lay in ruins, its economy decimated. The war had ravaged its infrastructure, leaving a trail of destruction. A significant portion of its adult male population had perished in the war, leaving behind a society in which women, children and the elderly had to find new ways of surviving. The issue of how to bring the Confederate States back into the Union was a contentious one. President Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Abraham Lincoln after his assassination, favored a lenient approach. He pardoned many Southerners and restored their rights, causing a rift with the radical Republicans in Congress who sought a more punitive approach. The question of what to do with the newly freed slaves was another critical challenge. The Reconstruction era saw the passing of the 13th, 14th and 15th Amendments, outlawing slavery, granting equal protection under the law and giving all men the right to vote, regardless of race. Yet, these constitutional changes did not immediately translate into societal equality. African Americans faced a difficult journey towards true freedom and equality, encountering obstacles such as segregation laws, racial violence, and economic exploitation. The Civil War had changed the United States in profound ways. It had settled the issue of slavery and states' rights, but it had also left deep scars. The struggle for equality and civil rights would continue for decades to come, shaping the course of American history. The aftermath of the Civil War was a time of profound transformation. It was a time of struggle and change, of new beginnings and hard-won progress. But it was also a time of disappointment and missed opportunities. The war had ended, but its effects lingered, shaping the United States as we know it today. The American Civil War, a complex and transformative period, continues to resonate even today. It was a conflict that arose from deep-seated political, economic and social tensions, most notably surrounding the contentious issue of slavery and states' rights. The war was not merely a clash of armies, but a clash of ideologies, of ways of life, of visions for what America should be. We've journeyed through the major battles that punctuated this bloody conflict. From the first shots at Fort Sumter, to the devastating losses at Antietam and Gettysburg, and the decisive Union victory at Vicksburg. Each confrontation was more than just a strategic move on a chessboard. They were pivotal moments that shaped the course of the war and, ultimately, the nation. The war was also a stage upon which key figures emerged, figures who would leave an indelible mark on American history. 
Abraham Lincoln, steadfast in his commitment to preserve the Union. Jefferson Davis, leading the Confederate States in their fight for sovereignty. Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee, military leaders whose strategies and decisions would determine the fate of countless lives. In the aftermath of the war, the nation underwent a profound transformation. The process of reconstruction sought to rebuild the shattered South and integrate freed slaves into society. Yet, it was a period fraught with challenges, and the scars of the conflict remain visible even today. The war's end did not bring immediate peace or equality, but it marked a significant step towards the nation we know today. The American Civil War was more than a chapter in a history book. It was a critical juncture that shaped the trajectory of the United States. It was a struggle for freedom, for identity, for the very soul of a nation. As we reflect on this tumultuous period, we gain a deeper understanding of the enduring impacts of the Civil War on the American narrative.